Hello, I'm Ken. And I'm Daniel Coombs. And the March 2022 What's Neat starts right, right now. now. The What's Neat Show is sponsored by Lombard Hobbies, your value hobby shop for over 40 years of modelers helping modelers. Big inventory, value pricing, fast shipping, and great service. Additional support is provided by Wathers Trains, everything you need to build a great model railroad. Check out their website at wathers.com. And by Bachman Trains. Now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at bachmantrains.com. And thank you for helping us support the best hobby in the world. This is What's Neat for March 2022. I'm your host, Ken Patterson. And this month, we do have a great show in that I've got a great interview with Andrew Bobbins, who showed up here in St. Louis with an absolutely immaculate, beautiful modular layout depicting the Santa Fe Railroad of 1959. This amazing layout's got the complete station of Topeka, Kansas built on it, as well as the Barstow shops. It's a real treat to interview Andrew for the show this month. Also in this video, we've got some great drone footage and modeling ideas from above by Jeff Nelson. He shared with us this amazing ship that hauls freight cars from Mobile, Alabama, all the way down to Mexico. This ship is amazing in that it's two decks, it's 10 tracks wide, and I measured it out in HO scale, it would be about eight feet long, about 15 inches wide, and what a magnificent model this ship would make for our layout. Also this month, I do a photography segment on how I designed and built the Bachman 2022 corporate catalog photograph using this amazing HO scale Amtrak Charger locomotive. It turned out to be a photography segment in that we cover all the parameters of how to get a great photo, f-stops, timing, and so many other things so that you can also create that perfect photo contest winning photo for your layout. Now this month, Walters has announced a brand new program which I find absolutely amazing. It's the Walters 2022 Model Railroad Scholarship Program. And this is a great program in that it's designed for high school seniors and recent graduates that are active in model railroading and they are pursuing a degree in one of the STEAM programs, either science, technology, engineering, arts, or math. How wonderful Wathers, a family owned company in our industry supports the youth in our hobby in so many different ways, including this thoughtful program. Check out their website for more information and details and criteria for qualified applicants. Also, I'd like to say, be sure to check out the What's Neat This Week show that we produce every month, <laughs> keeping you updated on what's new in the hobby with special guests, great interviews, and a lot of information. Again, every single Saturday we shoot it, except for the last Saturday of the month, keeping you informed in the best hobby in the world. I'd also like to thank very much Lombard Hobbies for helping us promote the hobby. They've got a lot of new products on their website, including these containers that are brand new out from Aurora Models. These are some of the most magnificently detailed containers I've ever seen in that I will show you photographs right now of the interior detail as you open the door. These things are amazing. They've got a lot of brand new products on their website, including the new Wathers Proto Well cars that have just come out, the Horizon passenger cars, also a great array of brand new open auto racks from Wathers. You will recognize these. They're absolutely beautiful. And the Santa Fe full length dome cars that are now available on the market. A lot of great products for you to check out at Lombard Hobbies out of Lombard, Illinois. Check them out at their website at LombardHobbies.com. And with that, let's continue on with the rest of this March 2022, What's Neat? <laughs> Thank you. 
For this segment of What's Neat, I'm standing with Andrew Bobbis. And Andrew, you have got the most brilliant looking Santa Fe layout Thank you. here at this great American train show. I want to tell you what, it's a real crowd pleaser. A lot of people have really walked around it slow and appreciated your art. I try. Tell me about your passion for this hobby. I grew up next to the Burlington Northern train tracks in Lyle, Illinois. My bedroom window was about 70 feet from the tracks. So I've been with it since birth. Um, frequent visits to Chicago's Museum of Science and Industry layout fueled my passion for it. They had a O-Gage Santa Fe based layout, mm. which I have tried to replicate parts of. And that's where my passion is. That's kept me going all these years. Now this modular layout at this show is pretty much your deal. I mean, you've got another helper here, mm -hmm. but this is all on you. Explain yep. to me why. Why not? Right? It, this is my pinnacle of life. After this, it's just downhill. But uh, no, it's I enjoy sharing my hobby. Okay. So, and you said that you're able to set up portions of this layout back at your home base. Yes. yes, just about a third of the layout, about a 20 by 16 foot layout is what I can fit. This is amazing. Now the height is just right so that children can see it and mm -hmm. parents alone. Did you do that on purpose? Uh, it's actually the standards of the club that I'm part of back at home. Okay. So a lot of this has been built for that. So just stuck with it. it About what is the height of this layout? 38 inches. So 38 inches high. And what is, what would you guess is your minimum radius on your triple track main line? Uh, 34 and a half is the minimum. Okay. So that works well with all the passenger yes. trains and all the freights. Now it appears that your era is, I'm going to guess late 50s to 60s. Late 1959. 1959. So it's perfect. Very well ex executed. So walk us around the layout. Tell us about some of the signature scenes that you've built. I obviously see the Barstow shops yes. right in front of us, which I've shot sh photos of, but it also appears you've built full interiors in these structures. I wouldn't say a full interior, basic interior, just to give the impression that there's more. Okay. But it's very simple, very basic. Again, all about, it looks like it, but it really isn't. Um, again, this was a building that was on the old museum layout. It was the last one I remember seeing before they tore the layout down. Um, it was fun to research it. There's not really any plans anywhere that I've seen of the building. All I have is just a basic template, and the rest I took pictures and guesstimated. You know, known height of a locomotive. Okay, the door is going to be this high. You know, this you know doorway. Okay, average 36 inches. Right. And I just based it on that. It's perfect. So all the grid lines on here are what the real one was. And this is all scratch built. This yes. is not 3D printed, which no, is, is what scratch. folks are doing, it seems mm -hmm. like, right? No, all scratch built. The core is quarter inch plywood, and then the rest is styrene. Now, I also see that you've lit this structure. Tell yes. me about the lighting. Is that LEDs? It, it's or just, just LED strip lights. Got on Amazon, hooked them up, plugged them in, and there they are. That's very awesome. simple. Now, I also saw that you had modeled the uh, Topeka I train did. station. Tell us about that. That was also on the museum layout. <laughs> um, partner, I actually went to the, the station is still there. We went and measured it. He didn't know it, but he does now. But uh, measured every portion of it. And then I came back with all my drawings that were, you know, complete mess, organized it, and then built it. It's nice. Thank it's you. It's so nice. And it also appears it's got a lot of interior in it, doesn't it? Actually, it's just uh, frosted glass. So it's, it? there's nothing in there. The next structure that you mentioned was you modeled the Argentine um, freight, freight depot. Terminal. Right? Uh, again, another one that was on the museum. It's not a full, full true to the real one. Okay. It's, you know, a representation of it. And again, I just thought it was a cool building. And actually, the original one, one of my friends owned, so I was able to measure it out and then make mine. Very nice. And in between the scenes, you, I see desert. Yes. I see just a lot of deciduous Midwest and desert, primarily, yes. Again, and a lot I, of structures. I try to model what the Santa Fe went through from Chicago all the way to California. That's quite an undertaking. And so far from what I see, all the viewers are gonna love what you've Thank done you. here. I mean, Thank it's just you. amazing. So how many train shows do you do with this? This is actually the first one I've done with just my personal layout. Okay. This is numero uno. Um, but over the pat, with the club, I do about seven to eight shows a year. Okay. So I'm not new to doing it. So I had some idea what I was doing. Was the reception with the public what you expected? I would say it was more than I expected. I, I, I wasn't quite sure how it would go, but I've been touched. I've heard nothing but kind comments. And that, again, that keeps me going. 
Now, Andrew, I understand you said you have a Facebook presence so people can follow you building this layout. I do. It's uh, Santa Fe All The Way Major Layout on Facebook. That's awesome. And one last question I wanna ask you is, what are the overall dimensions of this? 20 and a half feet by 44 feet. It's amazing. Thank you. Another thing you mentioned is, describe to me the type of track you used on this. Uh, just Atlas Code 100 painted with spray paint. Okay. And just again, very simple, very durable, especially for a modular layout because this gets banged in a trailer, you know, moved around a lot. I want something that's not going to break on me, you know, very quickly. Right. Now, Andrew, you mentioned that this layout is stackable for transportation. Yes. Describe to us your design on that. Um, actually, again, with the club, we have uh, a trailer and all the everything uh, just it just stacks in a cart that was uh, custom built. So very, again, very simple, the whole cart rolls out on wheels, I unload it, put the cart back in the trailer. It sounds if, if it sounds very functional with regards yes. to being simple. It, again, we want to, when we built the trailer for the club, we want it quick and easy, get in, get out as quick as we can. So to get all of this layout in took maybe half an hour for everything to be inside the building. Not put up, but in here. Right. Now, a lot of folks on their layouts, on our Midwest Valley layout, for example, we didn't choose to have backdrops, mm -hmm. but you've got low backdrops that fit the scenery mm -hmm. going around everywhere except for the yard. Mm -hmm. And I imagine that's so that you can have exchanges with yes. the customers. Yeah, uh, that and so I can get the trains on easier. Is that right? Yeah. And did so, you paint these backdrops? They're all painted by me. That's nice. And they're made out of uh, masonite. Yep. Masonite? That's amazing. And I guess those pop off before the layout gets stacked? Yes. Yeah, they're just held on with C-clamps. Everything here is there to made, be made quickly. Okay. Simple, quick, and easy. Now tell me, it looks like you use DCC on this layout. Yes. What system do you use to power this layout? NCE. How do you like that? I love it. So I've had minimal issues with it, more so probably, you know, operator error more than anything else. Okay. Do you but, use radio units or are you all plug and play? I have a radio and I have a plug in one. So both? Yeah. Dude, this is commendable. The viewers <laughs> are going to love this layout, Andrew. And I want to really thank you so much for sharing this with nope, what's, the folks from What's Neat. James yeah. Aguirre is running camera for us. Thank you, James. Thank you. And that is this segment for What's Neat.
2022 catalog and this shot's going to be all about the track. Bachman has recently come out with cement concrete uh, ties for their new easy track line of track and that's what's going to be incorporated into this shot along with scenery. As you pan down you'll see what we have so far. It's going to be more of a technical shot of the three tracks and the brand new Charger locomotive that uh, Bachman has introduced recently onto the market. And as you pan back up Anna, you will see that this shot is going to be more of a technical drawing. They've given me an example of what they want and what they're going to do on this shot, rather than it be all about the scenery, it's really going to be about the locomotive and the track. So rather than exposing a full beauty shot, which is normally what we do when we're doing shots like this, we stack up all the scenery, the mountains, the trees, and the various levels of scenery to make something very beautiful. This time it's about the technical aspect of it. This is what the client wants. And they're simply gonna take what we shoot, crop it out to the middle, and make it a real tight shot at a locomotive and the track. So what I've got, I've started out here with a great big sheet of four by eight foam, and I've laid it all out so that I'm only going to be able to have on film what's going to be seen in the shot. There's no point in you utilizing the entire sheet of foam if we don't have to do that. So I'm going to take out this sheet as I've already cut out the shape of what we're going to have. And what we're left with is this scene that I will then zoom in tight on and I will scenic out the sides with regular scenery, ballast, dirt, trees, and bushes to fill in the background. And then they can take this shot and turn it into exactly what they want. So let's see how this one turns out. I started the process of preparing the diorama of ground foam and dirt and all the scenic aspects by simply painting an earth tone color paint onto the foam. This will allow the pink to not show through when everything's glued down and it also seals the foam. It's a great thing to do when you're actually building a layout and you want the foam to not degrade as quickly by simply sealing it with latex paint. The next part of the process was I glued down the Bachman Easy Track with the cement ties. I used Quick Seal Plus from DAP. This glue dries absolutely clear and it also allows ballast and glue to stick to it. I weighted down the track with some weights that I had in the basement just to keep everything firm for the you know, about 12 hours that it takes for this glue to set up. Once everything was set up, I then sprinkled a little bit of ballast on the outside edges of the easy track. Now I will put ballast between the tracks as per my instructions, but for this part I put down dirt first of all, and then I put down ground foam, two different shades, light green and medium green Woodland Scenics ground foam, and then I put the ballast on both sides of the main line just on the outside to feather an area between the ground foam and the track. This makes the scene look absolutely prototypical. Now, if I was finishing this as a finished layout, I would probably cover all of the easy track with the gravel on all of it. I would literally just cover it all. And then I would take my paintbrush and I would brush it in gently in between the ties and all around to finish the scene. I actually did this when I created the original Bachman Easy Track ad back in uh, 2001, and it looked absolutely fantastic ballasted that way. Again, I use a fan brush to ease the ballast, brush it in, make it smooth. A fan brush is a very gentle brush, and it makes spreading the ballast very easy with no lines and no imperfections. Once the ballast is set into place, I then use this Woodland Scenics Scenic Cement and I liberally applied it to the entire diorama, spraying all the dirt and all the ground foam with a very fine mist as not to puddle. Now this, this glue 
actually has a wetting agent in it, which allows it to soak into the ballast without beating the ballast and making it kind of just look not so smooth. It allows everything to go down and be glued exactly the way we laid it when we brushed it out with the brush. Again, the dirt, the ground foam, and everything is liberally wet with this glue. For this diorama, it only took one bottle of glue, but as you can see, I had a multiple bottles that just had a little bit left in them. And so I shook them up thoroughly and then put them into the spray bottle and applied it with a fine mist. Once the diorama was drying, I actually tilted it up on end, allowed the glue to drip off the edge onto into a trash can, and everything is ready now for the trees and a final scenicking, as you can see here. So now that we've got the basic scene built, it's always important to do a test photo shoot with the diorama, just to make sure that the uh, team of artists on the client's end are happy with what we've got so far, and they've got something they know that we can work with. So I'm gonna show you the diorama. It's set up out here right now. 2.30 at this time of the year is shoot time. I've got the Charger locomotive. I've got three lines of the concrete track all set up. And I've added just a couple of trees to the scene so that we can get an idea of what needs to be filled out in the photo. And as you can see, so far we've got something going really good here where it exemplifies and shows off the ties and also the bushes just feather the scene on each side. Now what I'm gonna do is add a lot more trees all the way around the diorama in order to fill it in, and then they can change things that they may wanna change in Photoshop. I'm also using a large reflector to light up the front of the locomotive during the photo shoot. So right now, let me just share with you the test photo shoots that we've got, the test shots. This is the way it looks so far. This is the reflector reflecting the light of the locomotive. As you can see, the locomotive is a little dusty, we still gotta fill in more trees, and they'd like me to put just a little bit of ballast in between each one of the pieces of Easy Track. So we'll do that overnight. And if I don't, if I have good weather tomorrow, we'll go ahead and finalize the shoot, do another couple of photo shoots, send them the photos right away, where the diorama's still set up outside in the event that I need to do a third or fourth photo shoot, just to make sure everything's tweaked exactly the way they wanna use it for their cover. So let's move on and see what happens next. So you've seen me do the test photo shoot that we did this afternoon, and I've been working all night on various uh, projects for what's neat and videos and what have you, and I thought, why not get a great shot of the Charger locomotive with a beautiful sunrise going on in the background. Now, generally, I like to shoot sunrises about 18 minutes before the sun actually rises, because that's when I get my best colors in the sky, the purples. So I've set up the Charger locomotive on our diorama that we built to do the corporate cover photo with, but I simply powered it up with DCC, which I've run outside here to the model, and I've got my camera, and I also have a total light set up here. And what I do with this light is I light up the side of the locomotive for about one and a half seconds, which gives us just enough light on the side to light up all the detail, and then the 45 second exposure with the camera at F22, which will bring the locomotive headlights and the clouds and the scenery in the background all into focus at the same time. So I'm shooting again about a 45 second exposure on this. And yeah, it's about 18 degrees out here, but the temperatures have not affected the track or the model so far at this point. So let me show you now how the final photography came out, the added bonus for the client's social media or otherwise other ways to expose this locomotive in a different light than you're generally used to with standard studio photography. So as I said, 18 minutes before sunrise is always the best time to get the colors, but there's nothing that beats the actual moment the three or four minutes that you get during the actual sunrise. I've got the camera set up. I've got the total light on right now full in that we've gone from 45 second exposures from the last photograph that I showed you down to less than 1.5 second exposures. And what I did was I lit up the locomotive with the total light during the entire time of the 1.5 second exposure at F22 again on the camera. The colors are magnificent. I can show you what the final photograph looks like, but let's just enjoy this moment because sometimes this is when my job actually feels amazing. It's moments like this you can't buy at any store that just makes for A, a great photograph, 
and be a great cup of coffee in the morning. So now let me show you the final photographs that came from this. That's so far what we've got. Now, again, we're going back this afternoon to show, photograph the final cover shot for the corporate catalog, which still has to be done. The scene still needs to be filled in with trees and bushes, but 12 more hours and let's see how that one turns out. So here we are outside doing the final shoot, at least what I thought would be the final shoot for the Bachman uh, 2022 cover. I'll show you what I've got set up right now. The scene is set up with trees and bushes. Everything's lined out just right. The client asked for there to be ballast placed between the tracks, and I'm experiencing about 30 mile an hour wind gusts out here. I've already picked up the passenger cars off of the grass once already as they blown completely off the diorama and rolled off. So, and the ballast is blowing around because it's in unsecured. So what I've got to do, I've got to bring everything inside. I've got to glue down the ballast in these furrows here so that nothing moves. And we're gonna schedule a reshoot after the snows that we get tomorrow. So this is gonna drag on for a couple of more days trying to meet the timeline of less than four more days to get this project completed. But that's just the nature of the beast. That's how this works. I am also losing my sun now to high clouds. So I don't have complete sun like I'd like to have anymore. So I would call this a second test shoot, otherwise known as fail. But let's continue on. And I'm also gonna show you how I go about making all of these trees. So let's continue on and see how this project turns out. So here we are, it's actually final shoot day for this Bachman cover. Yes, we had a snowstorm and I've let a couple days go by where it's all melted already, but I'm set up with a good day, not very much wind. It's actually almost 50 degrees out here right now. Go figure that for January. Um, but the shot is all set up now. The ballast is between the tracks. The locomotive is in position. All of the bushes are lined up around the entire scene. And what these are, are this is a line of bushes that Bachman actually sells in their uh, scenescapes line of scenery products. And I take the wire armature bushes and I create them all at the same time on a sheet of foam. I put flocking on them uh, and then ground foam of various shades of colors. And they make very, very, great looking uh, bushes. The bluff scene that I used to have on my layout in the house was covered with these bushes because they are just the right height for the honeysuckle that grows wild out here on the cliff on the bluff of the Mississippi River. Now I'm using a reflector here to reflect light onto the side of the locomotive here so that both sides of the locomotive are evenly lit, which is really important. I don't want any hard shadows in this part of the photograph. I want the shadows to be blended out and that's what the reflector does. Also on this, I've got sagebrush trees. And what do I mean by that? I take flocking and I put over sagebrush armatures. And at some point I will do a what's neat uh, segment on how to do this. It's, it's something that if you put on too much, you can end up with cotton candy looking type trees. Another type of armature I like besides sagebrush is to just use wire armatures. As you can see the tree in the background to me right here, wire looks fantastic. You don't have to flock it. You can make a great winter scene or you can put flocking over this, spread it out real thin and then put your ground foam onto that. So with that, what they're gonna do on this photograph is they're gonna take this final shot and they're gonna bring it into Photoshop and they're gonna drop in a city just above the trees in the background. So it'll be a well-balanced photograph, well lit. It should be a dynamite, striking looking cover for the Bachman 2022 uh, catalog this year. So with that, let me show you the final photograph that they have done. They have done the Photoshopping on this. And what do I mean by that? I've already seen a mock-up of what it's gonna look like. So I can show you now this final shot of the way it came, came out. Just an absolutely wonderful day, a great photo shoot, and make sure you pick up your copy of this Bachman catalog this year at a train show, it'll be great. And so with that, that says photography segment of what's neat, how to shoot a photograph, both sunrises, and of course, the final shot here, shooting at F22, quarter of a second, eight different shots, different angles of the diorama and let them choose what they want. So that's this segment for what's neat. All of the products seen on this episode of What's Neat are available from Lombard Hobbies in Lombard, Illinois, or order online at LombardHobby.com. Authors Trains, supporting hobby retailers across the world since 1932. Check out their website and learn more at Wathers.com. 
Bachman Trains. Now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at BachmanTrains.com. Thank you.